interested in this um, moving image concept, and we mentioned earlier, but also the interface with you know, art. And it's something, I suppose, to some extent, the first thing at the film festival that's already started is the AES and F production of uh, Feast of uh, Trimalcio at the Art Gallery. Yes. I witnessed yesterday, which is quite an extraordinary thing. It's amazing, I, isn't it? It is amazing. I think I, I, I had never, as an avid golfer, I had no idea it could be so orgasmic. <laughs> my, Everything my Saturday, can be. My Saturday morning jaunt will never be the same again. <laughs> but you've got, got to wear those. You've got to wear those. You've got to wear those. You've got to wear those clothes and have those ladies and blokes around. Goodness and me. all those moles dropping into glasses of red wine was quite something. But I was yeah. just interested in the um, the moving image and. Um, its relationship with traditional film, and is it, is it to some extent um, on the way of taking over the standard piece of, of visual art uh, in the sense of a painting or a drawing? What, 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 where do you see this? Do you see art galleries in the future sort of becoming just galleries full of big 3D things like Feast of Trinaccio? No, I don't. Uh, but I, but I think certainly there's now an understanding that, that obviously moving image-based artwork can be as wonderful and as rich uh, an experience for an audience uh, as a painting. And in, in fact, it's one of the most um, sort of hotly collected areas of contemporary art in Australia. I think Australia is one of the biggest collectors of new media work in the world. I didn't realise before, but um, no, it won't take over in the same way that, you know, when the internet arrived, the book was going to be dead. The book isn't dead, of course it's not. Um, painting will always be vitally important, as will sculpture and, and Theatre, live theatre will always be important in the same, you know, and so will film. Um, but increasingly these forms merge. You know, visual art and film has always had a very, very close relationship. I mean, Dali, for example, made a lot of experimental films. Man Ray made films. Ledger, Ferdinand Ledger made films. Legend, Legend made film. um, so, you know, there has always been a kind of custom. I mean, they're, they're, you know, it's always been a really kind of interesting crossover between these between these mediums. Um, and I, you know, I'm surprised, but we are unusual in a film festival to to want to showcase that and I suppose juxtapose performance. Obviously, it's a very different audience experience seeing a work in a gallery. It's something that you tend to move through. It's not often that you stay and watch a whole work. I mean, something like AES and F, you do stay. It's absolutely compelling. Um, some things are, are more ambulatory. You're walking through, you're picking up a mood, and you keep going. So, you know, it varies, um, and it certainly requires a different kind of, of language. And so, it's really, really looking forward to seeing what Warwick Thornton does. Um, we made Samson and Delilah that we had money in last time, and we commissioned him to make his first gallery based work as part of Stop the Gap at the at Sam's Day Museum. Some of these um, images, such as those moving image productions, such as show really go almost hark back to the silent movie, do they not? I mean, okay. In the sense that that show has, has no dialogue but, but, but thundering, you know, times thundering music to accompany it. Is that, is that its roots? Is that, its, or is that, is that where it's going? Is, what, is that what separates out a moving image, a production from, from, a, from a cinema film? I don't know that there are any rules. I don't know if you can define it. I mean, it just depends what the artist is trying to explore. I mean, often there is no dialogue. Often it is very image-based, and I suppose that's because of visual art. Um, although sound plays a very important role. So it, it's tricky. I, I, I don't think there are rules. I think it's just about the context of the viewing space and what the, art, the, the artist wants to say in that particular viewing space, rather than making a short film that presents in cinema. Um, and, and probably a short film that you see in a cinema is likely to be more dialogue based. Um, but then you see very experimental work happening in the cinema as well. I mean, an interesting artist who, who we're showcasing next year and who we've had his films in our program in the past, a picture of is Ethical, who's a Thai artist uh, and filmmaker. I mean, his film, Uncle Boon Me. Uh, recalls his past lives, just won the top prize at Cannes this year. Um, and we're screening that in our program. Um, he's made an accompanying installation work, which will be on at the Contemporary Arts Centre of South Australia. So you can see both. And you can see, as an audience member, perhaps quite clearly why he chose in one place to present one kind of work in another forum or format to present the other work. You know, I, I think it moves back and forth. But we've got a big silent cinema program, um, and we announced two, two bits of it. There's two more to come that we're announcing in January.
January, but um, Metropolis, which is absolutely a film, um, but we're presenting it with a new live score, um, which is going to be great. And uh, and then the Benchy um, uh, presentation, which so it's a Japanese silent film called The Water Magician from, the, from 1923, I think. Um, and uh, this is this very stylized performance tradition from kind of Jap Japanese um, traditions like No and Kabuki theatres. Um, where uh, there is a live performer talking to a film. And it's not a visual performance, it's very much an oral performance. They're standing to the side of the screen, they're not particularly brightly lit, but what they're doing is creating a vocal live accompaniment to the film where they're telling the story, they're often performing dialogue that the characters are saying, um, they're commenting on the action, and as they're doing it, subtitles in English will come up on the screen so you'll see what they're doing. So that's, so that's much more of a performance, kind of performance art piece. Now, you have a number of stars coming, but perhaps the superstars, Douglas Trumbull of 2001 yes. Space Odyssey and Close Encounters and Blade Runner fame. Tell us how you were able to secure him. I, I can't, still can't believe we did it, actually. Um, Adele Hahn, my colleague here, who's the Associate Director of the Festival and a marvellous curator, um, I'd come up with the idea of doing a, a strand about visual effects and, and wanting to showcase, if you like, a series of moments across, across the 20th century up until now that we felt were kind of turning turning points in cinema and um, after grappling with that for a few months she came came up and, and presented a number of films um, that we discussed but in particular uh, said I think the way to bring this all together is to invite Douglas Trumbull. Uh, we tracked down through colleagues at the BFI, British Film Institute in London, who just had him as a guest and uh, got his contacts and emailed him and he's a lovely guy who was very enthusiastic to come. It's his first visit to Australia and, uh, and it's a real coup for us. We're, we're thrilled and rising some pictures which are based here locally that are kind of amongst one of the leading companies internationally now for CGI kind of visual effects are sponsoring his visit and so thrilled he's coming. So there's a nice kind of synergy there I suppose. We, part of sort of showcasing I suppose visual effects is that we have such a strength here in South Australia that we wanted to kind of highlight. So. Um, so it's all come together really kind of, kind of cohesively. Now, no doubt he will be keen to be involved in the appetite portion of the program, involved with the city of Ongoing. Tell us a little bit about how uh, that, that came together, and in particular the, the, uh, the feast night. Uh. I worked in on the 2011 Festival of Arts, and uh, Robin uh, appointed Gay Bilson to work with us, and she I produced four feedings that she did around South Australia. Uh, we did Canberra, uh, Penishaw, Stricky Bay, and Beachport. Um, a similar kind of model to this, certainly that we got a local potter to create a beautiful bowl and that you turned up and you was filled with local produce. In that case, Gay prepared all that food um, with a bunch of volunteers. This time what we've done is um, Gay has managed to pull together 11 fabulous chefs from Australia, predominantly from our McLaren Bay Olawalunga region. Um, and she has charged them each to create their own version of a fish soup or a fish stew using fish caught in that area. Um, and we're already getting a list of the menus that they're going to create that are just stunning. And so you um, purchase your ticket, when you turn up in Wollonga you get your bowl which is made by the jam factory and wander down on the beach and have it filled by one of these wonderful chefs. You sit on the beach, the sun sets, behind you gradually projections of people, you listen to music and uh, I think it'll be a really wonderful kind of special, special evening. It's just a lovely special event that we can put alongside this program. We've also invited um, four of kind of Australia's leading foodies, Gay Bilson, Chong Lu, Po, and um, the Australian critic, John Lethley, our food critic, um, yes. to each uh, select a film that for them has, contains their kind of favourite on-screen food item. Um, so I think that's going to be a really nice kind of event to see as well. My final question that it relates to um, the film festival having a slide in the middle of what's now it's known as Mad March. Yes. Why, amongst such chaos elsewhere in the city, and not say a quieter time two months later? Well, interestingly, when we were set up, it was the quiet time. Uh, the only other event that happened in Adelaide uh, when we began in our first festival was 2003, uh, was Wynand. Uh, so we began, and as it turns out, it is the perfect time of year, kind of by chance, really. We sit, the year begins with Sundance, then Rotterdam, then Berlin, and then we sit beautifully just after that. So there's a really kind of great run-up of um, premieres and then a, then a lull, which means that we're able to secure a whole other kind of international people that, that we can attract each festival to be on our jury or filmmakers to come and produce their films. Um, it's also early enough in the year and far enough out of the 
year to not directly compete too much with Melbourne and Sydney and Brisbane. They're all much bigger, more well-established festivals, so we're all competing for the same titles. So it means that we can we mainly program from the kind of Toronto, Venice, Rome, Busan time of year, which is sort of August, September, October, November. Um, and it means we can generally get a lot of what we get from them. Um, and then finally, it's a very good time of year for the investment fund films. They will premiere with us and then they can either premiere immediately before us in Sundance in Berlin, which a couple of films have done, or they roll into Cannes. And so it's a really, it's also a very good time in terms of Australian releases. Quite a number of films that go on and release in May. Um, so it, it, it's just good timing. Um, since then, the Fringe has gone annual, and as of 2013, the Adelaide Festival of Arts will go annual. Um, and we're looking at that. We're going to see how we go this time. It's the first time we've been completely within the Fringe dates. And we'll see what kind of impact that has, and then decide whether or not we want to move in 2013. Um, in terms of the calendar, internationally and nationally, we would like absolutely to stay where we are. But certainly, if it harms our ability to grow our audience, then we'll move. Well, it sounds like an extraordinary eclectic uh, and broad-ranging film festival. I hope it, uh, it all goes very well. Trent Cedric, thanks for your time. Thank you.